Hey, what's up? This is Leandro Bigetti from LittleAlchemist.io and today we're gonna talk about pattern matching. In Elixir, when you have an equal sign, a operation of pattern matching takes place instead of the regular assignment. In other languages, when you have something like foo equals three, it's simply that the value on the right is put into the value of the left. This is usually associated with one variable being assigned to a value. When you have a operation of pattern matching, more variables can bind to values. What Elixir does is that it tries to match whatever's on the right to whatever's on the left. Let's take a look at some examples. We can do the usual stuff, right? Foo equals three, bar equals whatever. And this works just the same, right? If I come to bar or to foo, they have the right values. However, if I get a list, for example, and I equal it to another list of strings, let's say, then this also works, which I found amazing when I first saw it. Elixir is gonna try to match whatever's on the right to whatever structure is on the left. Now, keep in mind, Elixir will only bind the variables on the left, right? You cannot bind stuff on the right. For example, this will not work, right? One, two equals foo because this is just bad. My foo currently has the value of hello, but if it was on the left, then Elixir would, would assign the value of that list to foo like this. And now foo is this list. That's fine, but you cannot bind stuff on the right. Now, as you already saw, what happens when it fails is that it, it throws you a match error, right? So if stuff goes wrong on a pattern matching, it will error out. <laughs> My cat is eating the, the fucking clothes that are hanging to dry. So something else you can do, you can match and it doesn't even have to be the same type, right? So if I do A, B, that can equal to hello, to. But then it gets really fun because you can do stuff like matching a list inside of a list. So for example, if I have here A, B, C, and then I have here one, two, but then here I have another list, A, B, right? Now, suddenly, A is one, B is two, and C is that list. And you can even go one step further. If we do something like this, but then we actually put another list here with the actual variables inside like this. Now, we can match this to say one, two, and here put a list, but put strings in it like, hello world, right? And that is gonna match correctly. So A is this, B is this, C is this, and D is this, which is freaking awesome. Another very powerful thing to do is pattern matching against maps, right? And the way with maps works is just that as long as the keys match, the pattern match will function. Key receives, I'm gonna put a variable here called V, right? And then let's pattern match this against another map, which you assume you have the value, right? So here is my stuff. Now that works, and then V has a value of my stuff. But what if you don't you actually want to use the value inside your variable right let's say in this case that my variable v has the value of my stuff and you want to match against that value my stuff right then you can use something called the pin operator which is the the i call that i don't know how it's called whatever this right a and then the value of V, right? Equals, I don't know, one in my stuff. Now that works fine and then A get binded to one and V is still my value, right? Now bear in mind, this has also to be on the left. But this is pretty powerful as well because you can use the value inside of variable inside the pattern match, which is pretty useful.
right? So recapping in this case, you're not trying to bind V to the value. You are using the value inside V to compare it against another value, right? Important difference to keep in mind. So one last thing to finish this off is one very used thing that I mentioned in the previous videos about maps, you can check it out, is to use it in the argument of a function, which is super powerful. Let's try to do that right now. So we're gonna come here to Atom and we're gonna create a module, right? Simple stuff, awk.ex, gonna def module awk. And I'm gonna create here a function, uh, mapping. Right here is where the trick is. You can pass in a map. When you're calling the function, Elixir will Elixir will already do the pattern matching while calling the function. For example, if I put in here a map that has like key and value, and I want to grab the value already out of it, this is how you do it. You put in here key. And this is gonna be value. Now you see this is this is a variable. So I'm just going to print it here, right? IO puts value. So all I will do is grab the value from inside the map and pass it on to my function. Let's try to see if that works. I'm going to come here to IX and just compile my module, right? And then we're going to call it awk.mapping. And here I'm going to pass in my map, right? Key, um, passing in my super stuff. Close this one, close this one, and boom, worked, right? Now let's recap for a bit how super powerful this is, because suddenly now you can put a map inside the argument of your function and it will lick elixir, 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 elixir will already match that stuff for you and you already have a variable with the value from inside the map which is super useful. All right, a little bit longer than I expected, but this stuff is super core to Elixir and very important to truly understand, so I thought it was worth the shot. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And until next time, take care and happy brewing. This is gonna match fine, right? What did I do wrong?